Welcome back to another video. All here on YouTube, it's been a while since I've posted here, and the simple reason was client work. I also had exhibition, and this artwork right here was also on the exhibition. So that's why I will be covering it. It's pretty relatively simple. We'll be using geometry notes most of the times. Also, um, grease pencil, but it's really easy. Grease pencil, it's you no know, animation and a little bit of compositing. Um, and this is the scene, and we'll be creating this from scratch. If you do want to get that project file, you can do that on uh, my Patreon, um, where the model will be, everything will be. You will have these two scenes, um, but I'll also provide a link to this model so that way you can just download it from uh, from this link but anyways we can uh, get started you will need this model um, so make sure you get it but anyways we can hop straight into geometry models because um, that's where most of it uh, lies within uh, so let's create a new geometry notes let's just make this a little bit more clean so you guys see what I'm doing and Let's add instant on, instance on points and everything's going to be hidden because we don't actually have any instances or points. So we first need to also distribute points on faces. Um, and now we can instance anything on this geometry. Um, let's do that via cubes. So let's add a cube. Now you can see we have a lot of cubes. Let's just scale it down. It's just too big. And it's a little bit messy, you can't really see what the shape is. And to fix this, let's just increase the density. Something like this. Uh, you can start to see the shape. Um, so yeah, in a matter of a few clicks, we already have it. Uh, like I said, it's really simple. Um, but there's a couple of things to do, one more. Uh, it's not just this. Uh, first of all, we can randomize the scale of these cubes. Uh, so make this a little bit more random and interesting. And let's do that via um, random value. So let's just add random value between 0, 0.0 and 1. If I do that, um, it does something like this. Now let's just make sure we have it from, I don't know, let's just say, 0.6721 also I want to either you can rotate it randomly or what you can do it and that's what I did for the last scene it was I added a uh, rotate a Euler and that way when I plug this normal value into rotation and this rotation to rotation now it's using the normals of uh, this object um, so that way it's a little bit more realistic. I know we're going for a more abstract look, but I um, feel like um, this is something that you can do. What you can also do um, that's optional, you can add a joint geometry and you can plug this input into geometry. And you can have both. So you can have um, the model itself while uh, these cubes. Uh, let's just increase this a little bit more, something like this. Um, and we also will need, of course, uh, set material. So let's just do that. Um, but if you will have this model in here, um, you do want to make sure that the set material is uh, over here. And so let's do that. I already have a material. Um, let's just create a new one for the purpose of this video. Um, and let's just make this complete from scratch. So let's call this tutorial and select the um select the material we just created go to render view now i need to switch to cycles and gpu um and we can't see anything because we don't have any lights so let's just fix that real quick um uh, rotate it something like this i placed it uh, behind the the object so something like this and I feel like we also need to import material over here, but let's switch this to um, something like this. Uh, now, I believe you will have um, the material already here, um, which should look something like this. So as you can see, this is the model that I created. This will be the texture that you will have. But I already changed 
uh, the texture so unfortunately i don't have that and i will not be using uh, the hand model i will be using just the cubes so let's just do that and let's focus on that um so now we have this uh these cubes um i think i also had one more light over here and uh, so you have to experience a little bit um uh, something like this should work let's also place a camera here and place it wherever we want so let's just double tap z move it a little bit further let's just make sure it's centered a bit maybe zoom out a little bit more and move it over here maybe zoom a little bit and something like this works i believe you could also move it somewhere like here and you gotta kind of experiment with lighting but one thing that i liked about the last scene is i had the light behind uh in, in this uh, center point uh where it would like uh, symbolize some connection or something like that um i could also decrease the spread i believe something like this and let's just go to material because that's uh kind of where the magic happens um so in this scene what i did i would just add a color ramp increase the roughness oh no color ramp exactly let's just um, squeeze these values so we know what we're doing and we can see it more properly um and i had more interesting colors i had like blue and i also had um a darker bluish but i had a noise texture that would uh, separate them um, let's just change to 40 so we have some variation and let's for the purpose of um, seeing what we're actually doing let's just change it to uh, completely different colors uh, right now they are mixing I believe on each of these cubes so the effects is subtle uh, and I did something differently in the original scene which was I would use a geometry so if you add geometry, it basically is like a noise texture in the 3D space. So randomly here in the 3D space, you will have black and uh, white values. And instead of 2D, it's in 3D space. Um, so now it looks something like this. And for the scene that I created, like I said, I had blue and a lighter blue. So that's something that I did. Um, it's totally fine you guys uh, should experiment a little bit and find what's looking the best for you and, and that's pretty much it what i did um i would also go back to geometry and tweak these a little bit more maybe there are too many of these right now um and maybe we can even rotate these cubes randomly a little bit so we have this extra rotate by we can also add the rotate uh, random value Maybe change from 0 to 1. And we can also, if you do want to do that, you can also add combine XYZ and choose whether whatever axis you want to um, rotate this. And also, you have to make sure you have not 0 to 1, but 0 to 360, because that's the full value uh, of angles, how you can rotate. Uh, for me, let's just keep it a little bit lower, something like 40 and maybe even lower right something like 20 and let's make sure it's on all of those axes so maybe i can even get rid of this because it's automatically on all of axes uh axes and now for the final touch that i did um maybe let's just add a little bit of a light over here um something like this works now maybe i'll just make this a little bit more subtle on these sides and let's just bring more focus uh, let's just bring, bring more focus here in the middle because that's where i feel it should be the most uh, attention okay. seems like it doesn't really doesn't really add much um, so maybe we need to increase it even further um but yeah let's just get that i think something like this works it doesn't need to be perfect um also for the shader um i'm not sure if i've done that but you can always use the subsurf and remember this is rgb so the last one is blue so let's increase it to something like uh 
one and because we did this if i turn this off you see uh, because we have the lights on the opposite side um, these parts of the cubes are completely black but with subsurf dust it, where the black where it's like nothing uh, it just fills out um, the color that you have here in subsurf so in this case it's blue um, maybe it's too much let's just decrease it to something like this and the slide is too much i believe so maybe like a thousand um something like this should work and then for the final touches what i did is i would add decrease pencil so let's do that and don't do blank don't do stroke let's just do scene line art i believe because the thickness is so high up we can see much so let's just lower it to something like 3 and now if I zoom in, uh, you can see I don't have the overlays turned on, so it's pure um, line art. And that's something that I did for the scene. Let's just go to render views. It will be a lot slower because uh, the scene art takes up a lot of uh, GPU. Uh, maybe we can increase it to something like 5 even. And maybe 4. That's maybe too much. Also, I had few issues when I was using um, line art, so to make sure you um, make sure you use this crease value, and that helps sometimes. And I think three was just perfect before, so let's keep it at that. And now I think we're ready for the compositor. Um, so let's just make sure we have transparency turned on because I want to put whatever color I want um, in the background, and let's uh, go ahead and render this now i'm gonna use probably like 500 uh, samples since it's a still image i can do more samples than usual and yeah let's just render so it is rendered um i can go finally now to the compositing use notes if you never used a uh, compositor it's relatively simple it's few notes um first of all we need the viewer so let's just again shift a and connect this image to viewer if you want to zoom out let's do uh, v if you want to zoom in it's alt v now let's move them so we can actually see what we're doing something like this and now we can start with the compositor so what i like to do is our curves so rgb curves and now we can um uh, tweak these curves a little bit I believe for this image I just left it um, something like this. I didn't really touch it. But um, what I did, what I did a lot uh, was Claire. So let's add Claire before RGB curves, um, and let's change it to blue. Now this is too much, so let's just increase it to something like um, eight. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, if I placed the light here, and I wanted to target this part over here where the connection was made it would look a little bit more cool but still um plume here always makes it uh bob so let's just make sure we have it a little bit more subtle and not too crazy let's also change the quality to high and specifically for this render what you can do is add saturation view value node and this can change a lot because if it's an abstract uh, render, you can uh, experiment with the hue, which is something that I do like. So eventually, if you do uh, use the slider, it will change the colors. So you can see how it look in the different colorways. Here, I think if we go more for the purple look, it might look actually cool. Uh, so something like this. Or let's change it to something like a red or a yellowish, maybe even. So maybe something like this. Um, and don't forget when you are finished with your render, um, you have to also plug this uh, final output to the compost as well. And now, if you render this image again, so let's do that. It will look like as you were rendering the scene before, but. Uh, when it finally loads it will add first of all the crease pencil and second of all it will add the compositing so as you can see if you've finished the render 
We have uh, this final renderer, it is transparent. We have the crease pencil over here with the bloom and everything. If you do want to change back, you can go to the view layer, but I want to preview the composite. Um, and now let's just save this and it's fully rendered. So I hope you guys learned something new from this video. It's a really cool but simple project. And I'll be breaking down even more renders that I made for my exhibition. And there will be a lot of content coming soon. So that's interesting. And I hope you guys, uh, I see you in the next video. Peace.